This video features high-end limited edition collectibles and is intended for adult collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Sang. And this is another episode of Collector's Corner, our podcast where we discuss hot topics in the doll and toy industry centered on some of our favorite brands. And it is officially that time of year for Integrity Toys fans. It is time to sign up for the 2024 W Club. Yes, we have many videos about the W Club in the past, so we're not going to be covering everything in detail here, but we do want to talk about kind of the new stuff that's changing, uh, new information, as well as our first opinion and thoughts on the upgrade dolls for this year. Yes, we're also going to be talking a little bit about the new Integrity Toys convention. It's their very, very first in-person convention since the pandemic, since 2019 was the last fully, you know, the full-scale convention. Uh, they did a condensed, you know, con event for um, Curated, and they've had many virtual conventions since then, but they talked a lot about that in um you know a recent live stream which we have watched um and yeah we're gonna be talking about it so we are officially in the sign up window period for the 2024 w club and the deadline to sign up is march 18th um of this year so very short window yes so if you want to sign up sign up soon Yes. Um, so it's once again, you know, $50 as it has been for a very long time now um, of, you know, all the other prices are raising, but that's, you know, the one thing that's stayed the same. Yeah. So once again, yeah, we're not going to dive into detail about everything the W Club offers. Check out our previous videos and the official Integrity Toys website if you want to learn about that. So as these live streams pretty much always are, it was hosted by W Club founder Carol Roth, and she was joined by Alain. And they jumped pretty much straight into, you know, the doll reveals. They gave some, you know, the basics of the W Club um, to start, but they kind of, yeah, jumped right into the upgrade dolls, which is, you know, pretty much the meat and potatoes of what people tune in for. And once again, these dolls are exclusive to folks who sign up for the new club year. So it is an additional expense can be added to your membership um, and it's optional, you know, which ones, which ones you want. The first designer that they brought on, which I, they, another thing too, is they pre-recorded the yeah. doll reveals. So the doll reveals themselves were not live. Um, but Jesse Ayala was brought on um, and the very first reveal, was fashion royalty. And I have to say, I feel like there has been a resounding request for Adele Makeda to make an appearance as an upgrade yeah. doll. I feel like for upwards of two plus years at this point. Um, I feel like I've seen that come up on IG, the W Club forum, just all over the place. I think in general too, there's just been really a demand for characters of color, you know, to appear or obviously, you know, IT switches up skin tones and all that, but yeah, like specifically for, you know, a black coated or character that is traditionally of color mm -hmm. to make an appearance in the upgrade dolls. But lo and behold, it was Danya. Danya, yeah. <laughs> Her name is Holiday Spot Danya Zar. I was really not expecting to see Danya. And it was interesting because Jesse had mentioned, you know, during this that he's like, oh yeah, this was a character that was like really requested or da da. And it's like, I, I do know Mothership Danya was extremely popular. I, I'm not horribly under the impression that I think that the Danya whole idea is, is Danya was kind of linked to kind of like club dolls plus like convention dolls. The last few times she was available was convention dolls. So there was that Danya from the Legendary Convention as well as the Danya from Seven Sins. Um, so it, she was kind of hard to get, so I can understand like- oh, we did just see Danya in yeah, Seven we Sins. Just saw her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think this Danya I, is I love the screening. Cute. I think it's cute. Is it's it, the Mothership screening. I was going to say, I was going to say it looks like a very familiar screening like yeah. we've seen in her recent releases. It looks like the Mothership got a haircut and it looks like she's on vacation. So I do think it's funny that Adele has been so popularly demanded as an upgrade doll and this Danya is wearing an outfit that reminded me 
of Petite Robe Classique Adele <laughs> from the Legendary Convention. Um, it, it's kind of like, yeah, like cute little white polka dots, I mean, flowy. I, yes, polka dots has been kind of a common look pattern for IT dolls because there was also those Jason Wu poppies with the polka dots as well. Yeah. yeah. Also, by the way, um, all of the upgrade dolls with the exception of Poppy are $165. Yeah so, dollars. The, yeah, so so that's a price increase because the last few upgrade dolls has been 160. I really have to say it's very tragic mm -hmm. that we're living in a world where the upgrade dolls are 165. I remember <laughs> back when they were like 140, 130. less than that, I yeah, feel like at one point. Yeah, that. it's so and and obviously the upgrade dolls are overall much simpler yes, than yes. standard, you know, IT dolls. That gives me concern about what kind of prices we're gonna be looking at into the new year for, yeah. you know, the standard dolls. Danya's cute. I was really surprised yeah. to see her. This was not what I was expecting. So the doll is based on kind of Audrey Hepburn um, with kind of like a, a, a nod to Elizabeth Taylor's like lavender eyes because she had unique kind of like bluish lavender eyes. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate that homage to that kind of style. Um, she's still, she's so, she's kind of basic, but I, I guess these are supposed to be yeah. kind of basic. But I do appreciate the fabric that they use, so it's not just strictly like a polka dot print on like cotton paper, uh, cotton fabric. It kind of has like a, a texture to it. Um, I did notice that too, actually, yeah. especially once I got a closer look at the promo images, I do the texture and kind of construction yeah. of the dress is, it looks really nice. Yeah, so it um, kind of has this like texture, kind of like pilled, protruding, like spotted look on the fabric, which is kind of cute. Um, I just don't know if I love the cut of the dress, that kind of asymmetrical, like flap that kind of protrudes out. Yeah. Um, I think there's a better way of doing it, but I mean, she's... She's cute. And does she have, she has kind of like a, a pixie cut? Is yeah, she has really she short has a pixie hair. cut with like really short, like side swept bangs, yeah. which is kind of unique. Oh, like the, the, the other thing too is uh, Danya has the blush skin tone, which was the recently released uh, skin I know, tone, it's so but... funny because like both Danya and Reyna that we're going to talk about in a little bit are on the problematic skin tones. Where like there was a head and body mismatch for both oh, of those. Yeah, the sun yeah. kiss is known to have mismatched skin tone and blush. Yeah. Also, they, they seem to haven't figured that one out yet. Yeah. All in all, I think this slot should have gone to Adele. <laughs> That's kind of my two cents yeah. on the fr. But Danya's pretty. I you know overall these upgrade dolls seem pretty well received. This is just once again not a very diverse mm. trio of upgrade dolls. So let's move on to New Face. So the New Face doll is Sweet Retreat, Reina Amadi. Um, another character I feel like we have seen pretty recently. You know, they heard my cry when I was like years ago when I was like, where is Reina? And yeah. we've seen Reina a lot the past like few years. The knee jerk reaction to this Reina. I think she's really pretty. I think she's for sure gonna end up being my favorite of these three upgrade dolls. Jesse and Carol were talking about how there's a bit of a going public Eugenia inspiration and like similar coloration on Reyna, which I can definitely see. This is kind of like a going public Reyna. Yeah, in a sense. like the, the eyeshadow, and the like the piercing blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think she's very pretty. Um, her outfit is you know, kind of like a cute, like tweed Chanel aesthetic. It's very summery. I don't Light. know if I want to wear tweed during the summer, but that's yeah. my only thing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I love the pink and blue. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cute. She's cute. She's probably She's, the best of the three. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, this Reyna is is really nice. Um, it's nice to, you know, I mean, I, I love Reyna, so it's, you know, it's nice to see her again. As a standalone doll, without any like connotations of like missing characters we haven't seen in a while. This is a very beautiful doll. Um, but yeah, like like I would I prefer to see some other characters. Like we haven't seen Imogen in forever. Ayumi uh, deserves I, her upgrade moment. Yes. I know we've seen Ayumi <laughs> as a moments doll, but Ayumi hasn't been around, hasn't been seen in 
quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think she's cute. She's very, like, pastel. She, it's she really... Could, yeah. She, she could fit in that, like, Mademoiselle line. Too. Oh, totally. It's really funny that her accessories, mm. it, you're, like, running through all the popular pastel colors. Yeah. She has, like, a lavender bag, you know, light blue shoes, and, like, you know, light pink, like, a little, like, bandana headscarf. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the bag is based on, like, a Valentino. It yeah. has an N instead of a... A B. Oh yeah. yeah. That, oh, that's really cute. The bag yeah. is really cute. Yeah. Yeah. Raina's right. great. She's my fave. But you know, speaking of moments, <laughs> <laughs> the final reveal. You know, David Buttry um, revealed Poppy, which we knew there was going to be a Poppy. There always is in mm -hmm. the upgrade dolls. I've seen some people say they, you know, they liked. His, it would be cool to see like someone different from the Poppy universe in this slot, I think that would probably be way too much of a risk for an upgrade doll because, you know, it's for like newbies and trying to attract people to the club. Um, I mean, I think, I think it would be fun to see a Ginger or Tula Bell or whatever, you know, upgrade. But what we got was Angel Eyes Poppy. So this is essentially a, a continuation. continuation slash borderline color variant of the undercover angel poppy. I mean, honestly, this is a, a few small details away from being a moment's poppy. I mean, there's like very slight differences in the construction of the bodysuit. Um, the original, yeah, had a plunging neckline and this one is, is like, you know, open cold shoulder, shoulder yeah. kind of, um, cold shoulder, yeah. but. Yeah, I mean, it's meant to be a companion doll. I think, you know, the, the theme was Charlie's angels and there's usually three angels. So this is our second angel. Yeah. So the, the hairstyle, it looks like the hairstyle is pretty much the same. This one is just brunette instead of the blonde of the original. I, and this one does, she comes with very similar accessories. I mean, she comes with less. Um, than the original did. Yeah, the last one, the uh, Undercover Angel was a gift set, so she came with a secondary outfit. Yeah, uh, this, one, this one is just, just the bodysuit. Just the body suit. She comes with the same gun accessory, and her bodysuit is orange instead of, like, you know, the glitzy red. Yeah, it's like a gold to me. It's kind of like yeah, gold. it's like a golden orange. I'm not so much a fan. Um, I think this was a bit of a unexciting <laughs> reveal of the upgrades. I mean, I think maybe people who missed out on the undercover Angel Poppy um, and really wanted a doll that's similar might be happy about this. Um, the impression, you know, watching the the live feed of the comments, it seemed like these these upgrade dolls were well received overall. But I think, yeah, for longtime collectors, probably particularly if you already own, um, you know, Undercover Angel Poppy. It is true, yes, there's three of Charlie's Angels, but they don't all like look like the same person. You know, it's like they're different people. So this is this is a slight spin on, on under, Undercover Angel. Like I said, it's a small step away from being a, a moment's recreation of her. Stop trying to make moments happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, on a, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm hope, hopefully they're done with moments. I think it's kind of funny because David kind of understood that people didn't like moments or colorways because he was like talking about uh, what to be, what to expect from him this year. And he mentioned like a throwback and he, he made sure like, oh no, it's not going to be a moment or anything like that. <laughs> it's it's going to be like inspired by something old. Yeah. Um, she's, she's a pretty doll. I know there's, there's people who are going to be happy with her. I think after last year's trio of moments, I, I, I personally really wanted to see three brand new dolls. Yeah. That, if you're going to use inspirations, make it very like loose mm -hmm. inspirations or yeah. again, you know, universal grails as we've been saying in the moments conversations. Yeah. Undercover Angel was super, super popular. But so that was it for uh, the upgrade doll reveals. You know, yeah, definitely let, let us know your thoughts on the upgrade dolls. Are you getting any of them? I'm definitely getting Reyna. Danya, I'm going to have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Poppy would be a no. Yeah. Poppy, Poppy is probably my least favorite by default because mm -hmm. I, again, maybe hot take, I wasn't 
Undercover Angel was gorgeous, but she she's not my taste. Yeah. I the really like feathered seventies, and obviously most of the time we see the era Poppy mostly lives in is the sixties, and mm-hmm. so this was an extremely like seventies leaning release. Yeah. Um, she's beautiful. She just wasn't totally my taste. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one is even less my taste because the color story, <laughs> to me personally, is is less appealing than the color story of Undercover Angel. I I mean, I I like her coloring and I like the neutral makeup palette. Uh, And again, some people prefer dolls to be more neutral so they can redress them. I think- She's versatile. This one's versatile, yeah. Yeah, so this first one was as well. Um, I think she comes with not enough to justify $160. I wish she came with a little bit more. Uh, on that topic, David did mention that he had additional accessories and outfits planned for the club, and he showed a, a teaser of that. Yeah. Yeah. That looks cute. But... but I mean, realistically, that's going to be a pretty pricey charge for those outfits. So, you know, You're back in the day. You're paying for a giant gift set at that point between yeah. the separate pricing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, back in the day, Undercover Angel was, I think, was $175. Correct me if I'm wrong. A, a steal yes. by today's standards. Yeah. And she came with two <laughs> yeah. outfits and, you yeah. know, a lot of stuff. Um, so, it is kind of tragic that we're in this spot. And I get, I get inflation and just all this, but it, it, it's still a bummer. Um, yeah. yeah, Raina's definitely my favorite, and then I like Danya, and, you know, I am a hardcore Poppy collector, so I make it Poppy, but it is, yeah, it is kind of a meh, like, I wish there was a little bit more for Poppy. Agreed. Okay. Moving on. Okay, so we definitely need to talk about convention. So the 2024 Integrity Toys convention is called Stilettos Out, an IT fashion thriller. We've talked about it a little bit previously on our channel, um, what was known so far. We got a lot more information. Um, we found out it is going to be taking place in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S., during October, they gave some sort of date range, like between October 4th and October 27th October, or November. something. Is it October and November? I heard October. Oh, I don't remember. Um, I know they've previously had conventions during usually, October. It's, it's usually, usually around Halloween. No, yeah. remember there was that one a convention yeah, that like Halloween. overlapped with Halloween. Yeah, it was it's like, like Halloween to like early November. So you, you're saying it's early October? No, they, they gave a huge range. Oh, they said okay. sometime between early October and late October. Oh. Yeah, so they, they gave a, a rough range that like early fall holiday season is when it's going to take Mm -hmm. place um there are going to be 555 slots available so i'm like Uh, y'all really that is one piece of feedback it's like it it was like I, i i totally understand as we've talked about before event planning is a can of worms. It's a lot of logistics, especially because they jump around location to location and you have to work with the venue that you have and the capacity that you have. But again, the club, the W Club is growing and growing and growing and growing every single year. It's like, we can't we can't keep having these capacities from like four or five plus years ago. It's like, it's you, not. And you know, they have juggled larger addition, uh, large, larger attendee sizes before. That yeah. one year they oversold and we had, you know, 700. 700 and something. Yeah, that was the year, that was yeah. the last in-person convention yeah. was over 700. That was because of an error, but yeah. but still they worked, was, they made yeah, it work. They, yeah. yeah, and I, mean, I was comfortable. Was yeah, I know there were some like long time IT fans who were like, oh, I, I like the intimate environment. It's like, Sure, but it's like, are you gonna I'm like? I'm sure you how- love the, the, the <laughs> intimate thing when you're looking at it from home. I know it's <laughs> like when you cannot attend because of the viciously competitive lottery. Which yes, yeah, so once again, it's going to be a right to buy lottery process, and it's it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. I'm it, honestly, if Sang and I, if if either Sang or I make it into this one. It's going to be miraculous. As we've shared with you all on the channel, only one of us made it into the previous convention, well, event, the previous condensed event um, with Curated. So, yeah. Um, They also said that there is not going to be any absentee virtual remote option. If you cannot attend in in person, you can't participate 
in the convention at all. Yeah. They did say that there is going to be a pre-registration doll uh, made to order for all W Club members, so that's nice. Um, but there's no remote virtual accommodations whatsoever, which is a bummer. Honestly, I was really hoping they would accommodate that because I really noticed like in the comments, there were a lot of international collectors and also like disabled, you know, collectors and, and stuff like that who were really frustrated by this decision. I think, you know, especially because since the pandemic, the IT community is starting to get used to the access of virtual conventions and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, we've had many conversations on this channel about like pros and cons of, of all that and back and forth. And that's why I also have said before, I think a compromise would have really been the yeah. best option for them to offer. You could even have a separate lottery specifically for, you know, people attending remotely or people who, you know, can watch footage of, you know, the inside of the event and have a chance to buy the dolls or whatever. Um, I feel like that would have been totally doable. So I'm not, I'm not completely sure why this decision was made, but that that's what they did. And they did also say that, and this is another thing that I think is going to make this event popular. The Style Lab is New Face. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had mentioned that they believe it's the first time New Face, that we've ever had a completely New Face Style Lab. Mm -hmm. So and it's designed by Jesse, so you know it's gonna oh be crazy. My God. Uh, yeah, it's if neither of us get in, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean that's exciting. Um, they did say they're not going to share any details of the location or anything like that um, specifics until registration ends. Mm -hmm. Um, and they did say you can enter more than once for multiple memberships, which has been the case in the past. But they did also mention uh, that you can attach people, obviously other people to your multiple memberships. And so you can like add a person's name to your second or third or whatever membership. And if you enter for that membership, so basically if you win using more than one membership, meaning you entered with multiple memberships and you have a another person's name tied to that other membership, only that person listed on the membership can attend, but you'll, you will have a chance to purchase up to two um, convention tickets. But again, you have to, you have to, you have to win more than once, yeah. essentially. So with that your multiple kind of creates a scenario if you, I mean, and the unlikely scenario where you are in a group under one mem one membership, collective that means only two people can go so yeah if you have multiple memberships um and more than one of your memberships wins you have the opportunity to purchase um convention tickets for up to two people that um, person has to be already listed under your membership under your other memberships yeah name yeah so, so, that, so they said even if it's like family members or something like that you have to list that family member's yeah. name yeah so say you bought you bought you bought multiple membership and the person you list under your account is your husband but he can't attend but your daughter can that won't work it has to be him yeah 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 um and also convention tickets are non completely non-transferable um and they are only mostly slash partially refundable within a certain period. So if you decide you need to cancel, you can't go, you you have, there's a deadline basically to do that and you will still be charged a processing fee. So yeah. you will not get a 100% refund. That was pretty much all the information they gave for now um, on the convention. So we didn't get any additional insight on like, you know, the theme or the types of dolls or anything like that. As we've already discussed, it's well, clearly... Well, the theme is to sled us out. Yeah, it's so clear. It's as, like a knives out. It's, it's, it's like... a knives out whodunit, which has, uh, yeah. It could mean anything. It could mean, that's so open-ended. And I, I don't really know what that's going to mean from a doll and fashion perspective. Um, we'll have to see, but... That pretty much concludes our coverage of, you know, the IT 2024 W Club live stream and, you know, upgrade doll reveals and, you know, some more convention information. 
So, so yeah, so sign up if you want to be part of the member for the club. There's a lot of perks, and if you're interested in, in Integrity Choice at all, I think you should just get the basic membership. Uh, the club is great. Um, $50 gets you a lot of perks. Um, even if you should buy just one doll, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So definitely let us know your thoughts on, you know, the upgrade dolls and, you know, all the reveals and information that came out. Um, and by the way, sit tight, IT fans, and stay tuned to our channel because we have already filmed two gigantic Integrity Toys reviews. Yeah. I don't know whether or not one of them might already be out or not by the time, you know, this goes out. I don't know. Yes. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. There's more IT content coming. Thank you so much for joining us for this podcast and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.